Hey guys, welcome back to Nifty Invest. In this video, we delve into the intriguing world of Zimbabwe's digital gold-backed currency and its potential impact on the nation's economic stability. Wanat Singh, a seasoned financial expert, has shared her insights on this subject, highlighting the complexities and potential pitfalls associated with such a monetary system. In this video, we will break down her thoughts and explore the implications of Zimbabwe's bold move into the world of digital gold-backed currency. Zhang introduces us to the concept of a digital currency backed by gold, a monetary system designed to maintain stability in a volatile financial world. Unlike traditional flat currency, which relies solely on government backing, digital gold-backed currency aims to tie its value directly to the market price of gold. However, Zhang acknowledges that the gold market itself can be subject to manipulation, as a rising gold price often indicates a failing currency. Zhang emphasizes that when confidence in a nation's currency erodes, gold tends to emerge as a new form of money. This phenomenon has occurred throughout history when economies face uncertainty, and it serves as a testament to gold's enduring value. Zimbabwe's decision to introduce gold into its currency system could mark the end of major currency manipulation. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content we do here on this channel. Let's get right into the video. But let's look at their digital gold back currency because it is backed by a certain amount of gold, which helps keeps it, keep its value stable. And it's tied, the currency is tied to the market value of gold unlike fiat currency. Well, I don't really know that that's exactly so, but um, the point is this currency is tied to the market value of gold, but the market value of gold is also clearly and admittedly manipulated because a rising gold price is an indication of a failing currency. And once you really get that piece, then what you want is the physical. That's what you want. Zimbabwe gold-backed digital currency will be used as legal tender and a store of value because they're trying to stabilize it. And look, this is something that happens 100% of the time when all confidence in the currency is lost, gold becomes part of the new money. So I would say that this is the end of the major manipulation in Zimbabwe because they're trying to introduce gold into the system. Problem is for the regular people. Ideally, backing a digital currency with gold involves having a certain measure of gold reserves. Yeah, I mean, you have to have a certain amount in order to do it. So the gold-backed digital tokens have a, best, a vesting period of 180 days. So that means that you buy it and you can't use them for 180 days, but they have a prescribed asset status and are acceptable as collateral for loans. Look, no government needs to say this is money. It's been money for 6,000 years, but this, you know, that they gotta, they've gotta say this is legal tender, just like they did with this garbage. They say this is legal tender, so it requires laws. But let's move on, because Zimbabwe's digital currency plan needs 100 million of gold. Okay, well, how are they gonna get that gold? Zimbabwe has been struggling to stem the decline, and they've introduced a policy last year that compels miners to pay part of their royalties in cash and metal. It's banking on the stash to help it with the latest plan. Now look, I don't care how, how they name it. When you coerce somebody into giving you their gold at a certain price, that is confiscation. They just don't want to say confiscation because they don't want to put that in your head, but it rose by any other name. So like other nations, they've been compelling miners to give them part of their gold. It's a concept which is pretty straightforward. We tokenize the gold, we have the gold. Every time we issue a coin, it is backed by real gold. We are still finalizing the details, but most countries are asking us how we came up with that plan. While the idea of backing a digital currency with gold is promising, it comes with its own set of challenges. 
Zhang explains that maintaining gold reserves to support such a system requires substantial quantities of the precious metal. Additionally, Zimbabwe's gold-backed digital tokens come with a 180-day vesting period, which could be a hurdle for users seeking immediate access to their assets. Zhang clarifies that governments do not need to declare gold as money, as it has served as a form of currency for thousands of years. However, they must establish legal frameworks to designate it as legal tender when integrating it into a digital currency system. This involves passing laws and regulations to govern its use. Zimbabwe's ambitious digital currency plan requires a substantial amount of gold, which raises questions about how the nation will obtain this precious resource. Zhang points out that Zimbabwe has resorted to compelling miners to pay part of their royalties in cash and gold, a move that can be seen as a form of confiscation. This is the kind of thing that has been tried over and over and over again, even here in the U.S. Originally, what, the money was backed by a certain amount of the confiscated gold. And then over time, because you're not physically holding it, it's easy to take that money away or take that gold backing away until ultimately there's nothing there anymore. Because once you put gold as a component of the monetary system, it creates restrictions and requires governments to think and be responsible. Do governments really want to be responsible? No, no, no. They want to tax and they want to spend and they want to spend and they want to spend and they want to spend. Want to spend. But they are setting the price to lure buyers for the digital gold back money. I think this is so interesting. So they set the minimum price, token price, at $10 for individuals and $5,000 for corporates and other entities. So maybe the general public can afford $10. Maybe they can't. A lot of them probably can't. The tokens will be sold in U.S. dollars and local currency because U.S. dollars have been in use in Zimbabwe for quite some time. You know, I mean... Even though, as we know, the dollar is losing a lot of value pretty rapidly. But the latter shall be at a 20% margin above the willing buyer, willing seller interbank mid rate, which means that if you're using the local Zimbabwe dollar, you're going to have to pay 20% more. And, and you'll see why in just a minute. So just bear with me on this. The introduction of digital tokens is the latest attempt by the South, Southern African nation to support its own local currency. They're trying to do something to get that confidence back. The plan was approved by the Monetary Policy Committee in March, eight months after Zimbabwe introduced gold coins as a store of value to help support the local unit. So, you know, look, gold always plays its part. Make no mistake, gold has been money for 6,000 years and still money. Debt limit default risk is higher than ever. How can you safeguard your wealth? Bitcoin is a more popular safe haven than the US dollar, the yen, or the Swiss franc, as a survey of investors shows. Now, this was the headline, so what would you think? Oh, a lot of people are rushing to Bitcoin and the digital currencies. Zine draws parallels between Zimbabwe's approach and historical attempts to back money with confiscated gold. Over time, governments have been known to manipulate or remove gold backing, ultimately eroding the value of the currency. She highlights that integrating gold into the monetary system places restrictions on governments, requiring them to act responsibly, something they may not always be willing to do. Zimbabwe's digital tokens come with minimum pricing requirements of $10 for individuals and $5,000 for corporations and entities. Zhang discusses the implications of this pricing structure and the challenges it poses for ordinary citizens. Zimbabwe's introduction of digital tokens represents its latest attempt to rebuild confidence in its local currency. This move follows the introduction of gold coins as a store of value. Zhang underscores the enduring role of gold as a monetary asset throughout history. In a world marked by increasing debt and uncertainty, Zhang reveals the preference of both professional and retail investors for physical gold. Gold, with its 6,000-year history as a safe haven asset, offers security and independence from counterparty risk. Zhang contrasts this with digital currencies and fiat currencies, 
which are vulnerable to manipulation and lack the tangible security that physical gold provides. No, take a look at this. This is the graph. Now, what do you have? Here's Bitcoin. Now, it is more popular to investors, the same as uh, institutional. Professional investors are in black and retail investors, that'd be like you and me, in blue. And actually, Bitcoin is a little more popular with retail investors than the dollar is. Here are those other currencies. They're all fiat, yen, Swiss franc, and, and there's something else. Their treasuries, which is the root of the problem, is all of the debt. But hey, that's even more popular than Bitcoin. That makes a whole lot of sense, doesn't it? But there's gold. 51.7% of professional investors and 45.7% of retail investors fly to the true safe haven asset. Gold, physical gold, physical silver in your possession because you hold it and you own it outright and it runs no counterparty risk. This is all counterparty risk. The debt is all counterparty risk. The digital currencies, that's all counterparty risk as we've recently seen with Sam Bankman Freed and with you know FTX and with all of that stuff. If you don't hold it, you don't own it. And frankly, it is just that simple. And when you can hold it and own it, why not? For goodness sakes, that is the true safe haven trade. And I find it so interesting that Bitcoin is being promoted in the title when gold is the clear winner because this is conventional. This has been the proven safe haven for 6,000 years. And because it is used in every single sector of the global economy, period. End of discussion. So what do you want to hold going into this? This is what I hold. And frankly, with the big rush of central banks buying gold globally, this is what you should hold too. Who knows more about what they're doing to these currencies than the central banks? They're buying gold.